the Helvetic Republic in 1798 became a battlefield of the French Revolutionary Wars. In the First Battle of Zurich on 4-7 June 1799, French General André Masséna was forced to yield the city to the Austrians under Archduke Charles and retreat beyond the limit, where he managed to fortify his positions, resulting in a stalemate. During the summer, Russian troops under General Korzakov replaced the Austrian troops, and in the Second Battle of Zurich, the French regained control of the city, along with the rest of Switzerland. Background Political and diplomatic situation Initially, the rulers of Europe viewed the revolution in France as an event between the French king and his subjects and not something in which they should interfere. As revolutionary rhetoric grew more strident, they declared the interest of the monarchs of Europe as one with the interests of Louis and his family. This declaration of Pilnitz threatened, ambiguous, but quite serious, consequences if anything should happen to the royal family. The French position became increasingly difficult. Compounding problems in international relations, French émigrés continued to agitate for support of a counter-revolution. On 20 April 1792, the French National Convention declared war on Austria. In this war of the First Coalition, France ranged itself against most of the European states sharing land or water borders with her, plus Portugal and the Ottoman Empire. Although the coalition forces achieved several victories at Verdun, Kaiserslautern, Neo and Den, Mainz, Amberg and Würzburg, the efforts of Napoleon Bonaparte in northern Italy pushed Austrian forces back and resulted in the negotiation of the Peace of Leoben and the subsequent Treaty of Campo Formio. The treaty called for meetings between the involved parties to work out the exact territorial and remunerative details. Convened at a small town in the Mid-Rhineland, Rastit, the Congress quickly derailed in a mire of intrigue and diplomatic posturing. The French demanded more territory. The Austrians were reluctant to cede the designated territories. Compounding the Congress's problems, tensions grew between France and most of the first coalition allies. Ferdinand of Naples refused to pay agreed-upon tribute to France, and his subjects followed this refusal with a rebellion. The French invaded Naples and established the Parthenopian Republic. Encouraged by the French Republic, a republican uprising in the Swiss cantons led to the overthrow of the Swiss Confederation and the establishment of the Helvetic Republic. The French Directory was convinced that the Austrians were planning to start another war. Indeed, the weaker France seemed, the more seriously the Austrians, the Neapolitans, the Russians, and the English discussed this possibility. In mid-spring, the Austrians reached an agreement with Tsar Paul of Russia by which the legendary Alexander Suvorov would come out of retirement to assist Austria in Italy with another 60,000 troops. Outbreak of war in 1799 The French Directory's military strategy in 1799 called for offensive campaigns on all fronts. Central Italy, Northern Italy, the Swiss cantons, the Upper Rhineland, and Holland. Theoretically, the French had a combined force of 250,000 troops, but this was on paper, not in the field. As winter broke in 1799, General Jean-Baptiste Jordan and the Army of the Danube, at a paper strength of 50,000 and an actual strength of 25,000, crossed the Rhine between Basel and Kale on 1 March. This crossing officially violated the Treaty of Campo Formio. The army of the Danube advanced through the Black Forest and, by mid-March, established an offensive position at the western and northern edge of the Swiss plateau by the village of Ostrich. André Masséna had already pushed into Switzerland with his force of 30,000, and successfully passed into the Grisen Alps, Chur, and Fistermunds on the Inn River. Theoretically, his left flank was to link with Jordan's right flank, commanded by Pierre-Marie Barthélemy Farino, at the far eastern shore of Lake Constance. The Austrians had arrayed their own army in a line from the Tyrol to the Danube. 
a force of 46,000 under command of Count Heinrich von Bellegarde formed the defence of the Tyrol. Another small Austrian force of 26,000 commanded by Friedrich Freier von Hotzer guarded the Vorarlberg. The main Austrian army, close to 80,000 troops under the command of Archduke Charles, had wintered in the Bavarian, Austrian, and Salzburg territories on the eastern side of the Lech River. At the battles of Austrich and Stockach, the main Austrian force pushed the army of the Danube back into the Black Forest. Charles made plans to cross the Upper Rhine at the Swiss town of Schaffhausen. Friedrich Freier von Hotzer brought a portion of his force west, leaving the rest to defend the Vorarlberg. At the same time, Friedrich Joseph Count of Nauendorf brought the left wing of the main Austrian force across the Rhine by Eglisau. They planned to unite with the main Austrian army, controlling the northern access points of Zurich and forcing an engagement with Massena. By mid-May, French morale was low. They had suffered terrible losses at Austrich and Stockach, although these had been made up by reinforcements. Two senior officers of the Army of the Danube, Charles Mathieu Isidore Decken and Jean-Joseph Ange Dortpool, were facing courts martial on charges of misconduct, proffered by their senior officer, Jordan, Jean-Baptiste Bernard Otter and Laurent de Wouvy and saint Cyr were sick, or claimed they were, and had left the army's encampments to recover their health. Massena's force had been repelled by Hotz's army at Feldkirch and forced to fall back, and Lechelber's failure to push through against Bellegarde's Austrian force in the Tyrol meant Massena had to pull his southern wing back as well as his centre and northern wing to maintain communication with the retreating armies on his flanks. At this point, also, the Swiss revolted again, this time against the French, and Zurich became the last defensible position Massena could take. Dispositions after pushing the army of the Danube out of the northern portion of the Swiss plateau, the territory north of the Rhine and south of the Danube, following the battles at Austrich and Stockach, Archduke Charles's sizable force, about 110,000 strong, crossed the Danube west of Schaffhausen, and prepared to join with the Vorarlberg corps of Friedrich, Baron von Hotzer before Zurich. During the month of May André Massena, now commander of both the French Army of Switzerland and the Army of the Danube began pulling back his forces to concentrate towards Zurich. Charles crossed the Rhine at Stein with an advanced corps of 21 battalions and 13 squadrons under Nauendorf on 20 May, while two days later in the east Hotzer crossed at Meiningen and Balzis with 18 battalions and 13 squadrons. On the 23rd the Archduke led 15 more battalions and 10 squadrons over the Rhine at Bisingen. Learning of the double-pronged advance, Massena seized the opportunity to drive a wedge between the two Austrian commands and on 25 May launched attacks against Hotz's corps to the east, and now endorsed to the north. Hotz's advance troops under Petrash were driven from Frauenfeld by Salt, while against the Archduke Michel Ney erupted from Winterthur, seized Andelfingen and threw back Nauendorf from Pfyn. Although the French were forced to withdraw on the appearance of Austrian reserves, nevertheless for a loss of 771 men they'd inflicted some 2,000 casualties and 3,000 prisoners on the Austrians. On the 27th Ney was wounded and his men driven from Winterthur, Massena thereafter concentrated his forces at Zurich, closely pressed by the Archduke Charles and Hotzer. By the end of the month the French lay as follows. Salt's division was on the Zurichberg overlooking the open country to the north from an entrenched camp constructed by André Ossi. To his left Audenot's division lay in support, with Garzen's brigade in the town of Zurich itself. Tharo's division continued the line across the AARE, with troops under Lodge guarding the left of the Rhine to Basel. To Salt's right Chabran guarded the south of Lake Zurich, with outposts stretched to link with the troops of Lecuba, at Lucerne and the Andermatt Valley. In all some 52,000 French and Swiss troops. The entrenchments on the Zurichberg were in a five-mile-long semicircle from Riesbach to Honk, but were incomplete. 
Charles decided to launch his main attack by the surest route, directly against the Zurich Berg with his left and center, holding his right wing back to protect his line of retreat. Advance of Ulachik against Wittekong. On 2 June the Archduke Charles became aware that Hotz's advance guard under Ulachik was advancing up against the main French positions near Wittekong, and sent a message ordering him not to attack until all his other troops were ready. However from 3 a.m. on the 3rd Ulachik was already engaged against Humbert's brigade by the time these instructions arrived and the action soon grew into a desperate fight. After four hours Salt's men were driven from Wittekong and the fighting continued all through the day. As things began to look serious for Salt, Massena, musket in hand, led a counter-attack at the head of his reserve grenadiers. The combined effort eventually pushed back the Austrians and secured the camp after a bloody fight, the French losing 500 killed and wounded, including Massena's chief of staff Cherine mortally wounded. Attack on the Zurichberg The next day on 4 June, Charles crossed the Glatt and launched a broad attack in five columns. On the Austrian left, the first column, Jelacic marched against Zurich along the high road and succeeded in breaking through the Rapids Will Gate but was driven back by Garzen's brigade of Audenot's division, and despite repeated attacks made no further headway. To its right, the second column, Bay seized the village of Herslanden and attempted to climb the slopes. However, the French under Brunette counterattacked and forced the Austrians back to join the first column. The third column, Prince of Lorraine found its direct route of march impractical and was diverted via Fallenden and Pfaffhausen. However, the attack failed before a murderous fire from the entrenchments. The fourth column, Hotz across the glass at Dubendorf behind the third column, and advancing through Startback, drove the French from Schwimmendingen. The fifth column, the Prince of Rus carried sea back and Alicon then detached part of its command under Rosenberg on its left at all Lycon to join. In the assault on Zurich, Audi note, though missing half of his force in Zurich, nevertheless threw himself on Rosenberg, attempting to drive in the Austrian flank. After a desperate fight, the French were driven back. Audi note carried from the field wounded by a ball in the chest. Charles's right flank under Nauendorf remained held back to guard Glattfelden. On the Zurichberg, Soult's division was assailed by three columns and pinned down to their trenches. Repeated assaults were beaten off and the fighting bogged down into an intense firefight. At 2 p.m., Charles assembled five battalions from his reserve including his own guard of honor and directed Olivier. Count of Wallace to lead these storming up the hill, leaving one battalion to watch the bridges, Wallace led the other four up a steep and narrow ravine against the French defences. The combat degenerated into close hand-to-hand -hand fighting, with soldiers using the butts of their muskets against the French abatis. At last at 8 p.m. after a desperate fight the Austrians were able to break through and pour into the camp behind. Sword in hand, Salt and his staff placed themselves at the head of a few companies of troops, launched a counter-attack against the rear of the Austrian column and drove them back to the bottom of the hill. Massena urged his artillery to redouble their efforts and brought up his reserve of grenadiers. The Austrian attack crumbled, those in the camp were scattered, those behind driven back. Over the course of the day, Charles lost 2,000 men, including three generals wounded, and 1,200 prisoners. The French lost more than 1,200 killed and wounded. Aftermath After the bloody fighting on the 4th Charles fell back a short distance to recover and devise a second attack for the 6th. Massena used the time on the 5th to regroup, and that night as the Austrians assembled for their attack, he withdrew to a strong position in front of Zurich, abandoning 28 guns commandeered from Zurich. His forces were now more concentrated, while the lake would oblige his opponent to divide his forces. The second day of battle never came. At noon on the 6th following a parley, the French were allowed to lead Zurich. 
Massena withdrew to the U at Liburg and arranged his line along the banks of the Limit. In Zurich, Charles found 150 cannons of various calibers. The outcome of the battle also damaged Austro-Russian relations, because Charles failed to follow up on the French defeat. In terms of personnel, both sides lost a general, Louis Nicolas Hyacinth Cherine and Olivier Wallace.